hello guys thank you for always taking your time to watch my videos this is drive test jig in today's video i'm gonna explain to you the concept behind uphill and downhill parking so first of all we're gonna talk about uphill parking Then when we finish, we will take our time to delve into also downhill parking. So let's first talk about the principle of uphill parking. So in this country, precisely Canada, and mostly we are in Toronto, which is Ontario. So we have a way of parking that you need to park whenever you are your vehicle is positioned in either uphill or downhill mode so uphill parking means your vehicle is sitting on the hill and the front side is facing up and also downhill parking also means that your vehicle is also sitting on the same hill and the front side is facing down so in case you happen to find yourself in such a situation like this this is how to park the first thing you're gonna do before you do this in case for this exam purposes or in case for the test or for the road test and even for your regular driving anytime the examiner tells you to do uphill or downhill the first thing you have to do is to scan your mirrors the rear view mirror the right side mirror and the left side mirror when you scan your mirrors it should be a quick check then the second thing should be your signal which is the trivigator or people call it the flashes so you signal to the right and scan your blind spot to the right then you have to go close to the cab and make a complete stop so when you make a complete stop you put yourself into parking lift the handbrake up then this is where people don't know why you have to turn the wheel to the direction that I'm gonna explain to you right now so in case he is telling you make an uphill parking then you're gonna turn the wheel all the way to the left so when you turn the wheel 90 degrees, it's accepted. But what I advise all my students to do is to turn the wheel all the way to the end. Lock the wheel. Because the more you lock the wheel, the more the examiner understands that. Or he can or she can see that you have really turned the wheel to the end. What are the reasons why we turn the wheel to the left side? and what are the advantages and the disadvantages so when your vehicle is sitting on the hill and the front side is facing up we assume that the vehicle is a machine and anything can happen to the vehicle whilst you are leaving your vehicle going to whatever whether you want to visit a friend or whether you are going back home you park your vehicle and you are leaving it in the parking lot so in that situation whilst you left the vehicle if you leave it without locking the wheel to the left side there's the possibility the vehicle will just slide back there's the possibility the vehicle somebody can hit it from behind or from the other side in that way if you had kept the wheel straight then the vehicle is gonna back up all the way down there and there could be people walking around there could be handicaps around there could be pedestrians there could be uh, kids playing around and the vehicle run over them in that way you're gonna be creating an accident scene and you could be sued for that because it's an offense not to make the right or proper parking so whenever he tells you to make appeal first of all signal to the right check your mirrors check your blind spot make sure you are making a safe parking when it's safe go close or move close to the cab don't hit the cab make a safe stop put yourself into parking then 
turn the wheel all the way to the left or lock the wheel all the way to the left and also lift your handbrake. These are the reasons why we do uphill or downhill. So um, now we're gonna talk about uphill with a cab and downhill without a cab. So we have two forms of uphill and downhill parking. Sometimes you get to a situation where you are parking but there's no hill. You don't see any hill there. So in that situation, how do you park? Because you get confused, you know what I'm saying? So I'm just like, you happen to be in a situation, it's not downhill, it looks like downhill, it doesn't look like uphill, it looks like uphill. So in that situation, how do you park? So in that way, we call it an uphill with a cab and downhill without the cab. So... It's the same way I did explain the downhill and uphill parking, but for them, they have a specific way you have to turn the way to, provided it's crystal clear that you are facing uphill, provided it's crystal clear that you are facing a downhill parking. Then if it's down, you have to turn the wheel all the way to the right. If it's up, you have to turn the wheel all the way uh, to the left. So with the downhill parking, you follow the same procedure that you use for the uphill parking. So for the uphill parking, as I did explain, you turn the wheel all the way to the left. Now, with the downhill parking, the same way, the same process, the same procedure that you're going to follow. But the first thing is, at the moment the examiner asks you to make a downhill parking, know that there's going to be every possibility, everything clear that it's downhill. He's going to take you to a place where it looks typically a downhill. He will never take you to anywhere. It's like a level ground. In case he takes you to any level ground or a level road and he tells you to do uphill or downhill, then you need to demonstrate the same situation to him or her. So let's say it's a level ground. He tells you to do uphill. Then you need to signal, check your mirrors, check your blinds, but go close to the curb. Turn the wheel out the way to the left, right? Even though it's a level ground, but the examiner is telling you to do uphill parking. So in that way, you follow his or her instructions. Uh, when it comes to the downhill parking, then with the downhill parking, even if it's also a level ground, and he tells you or she tells you to make a downhill parking for him or her to see, then you have to demonstrate a downhill parking, regardless it's a level ground. So in that way, you scan your mirrors, signal to the right, check your blind spot, go close to the cab, and turn the wheel all the way to the right. So remember, it's very confusing because I have this all the time with my students. You tell them to make uphill, they end up making downhill. You tell them to make downhill, they end up making uphill because it's a bit confusing memorizing the whole situation. So if it's downhill, put it in your mind that the wheel goes to the right, all the way you lock it to the right, Put it in your mind that you can turn it 90 degrees to the right, but I encourage you to lock the wheel all the way to the right because that makes it right for the examiner to see that you have really turned the wheel. And if it's uphill, turn the wheel also all the way to the left. Now, with the uphill without a cab or downhill without a cab, right? So, uphill with a cab is for this two. All right, so this two always goes with cab. Now, this, this uphill without a cab. So this too also goes 
with no cap. So in that situation, if you find yourself in this situation, up here with a cap and up here without a cap, I have already explained to you the up here with the cap. In that way, you see the cap on the side of the road. But we have situations you see up here without a cap and down here without a cap. You mostly see all these things. Uh, we are scared of the city. Where you drive there, you don't see any cabs on the road. Even when you're making 3.10, you don't see anything on the road like a cab. And that way, you can find yourself in that situation, especially if you happen to get your road test done in Oakville. Oakville has a scenario like that, Oakville Drive Test Center. They have a scenario like that where in one of the roads, they have no cab. So in that way, what do you do? This is what you do. When you have uphill without the cab, this is the first thing you have to do. If the examiner tells you to make uphill without a cab, in case of road tests, and for your regular driving, first of all, we have the principal MSB, your mirror, signal, blind spot. So check your mirror, scan the rear view, the right side, and the left side mirror and then signal to the right quickly scan your blind spot and you go close to the cab make a complete stop when you when you make a complete stop put yourself into parking lift your handbrake up remember this is uphill without a cab so if it's uphill without a cab you turn the wheel to the right Okay, remember if it's up with a cab, we turn the wheel to the left. So in this situation, if it's up without a cab, we turn the wheel all the way to the right. You can lock it 90 degrees to the right, or you can lock it all the way to the right, which is up without a cab. If it's downhill without a cab, then the same procedure, you turn the wheel all the way also to the right after checking your mirror, your signal, your blind spot, and pulling over close to the cab, put it into parking and handbrake. Then you turn the wheel all the way to the right. The reason being that when the vehicle slide back, even without a cab, it's gonna hit something on the right. Without a cab, if it's uphill or downhill, it's still gonna hit something to the right. So these are the reasons why we turn the wheel all the way to the right, even if it's uphill without a cab or downhill without a cab. So note the difference. Uphill with a cab, turn the wheel all the way to the left. Downhill with a cab, turn the wheel all the way to the right. Uphill without a cab, turn the wheel all the way to the right. Down here without a cab, turn the wheel all the way to the right. This is the principle that you need to follow to save yourself from accident in case the vehicle slide back so that you can save somebody's life. These are the reasons or the advantages we do uphill and downhill because in case of emergency, the vehicle can hit maybe a cab or it can hit as a house, a pole, or whatever that is around so that you can save people's life. So let's practice how to do the uphill and downhill properly so that you can save someone's life. Don't drive any how that you want. Drive and follow the rule. If you follow the rule, you are safe and you believe in yourself that you are a good driver. So this is the concept or the rationale behind uphill and downhill parking and also uphill without a cab and downhill without a cab thank you for watching this video i really appreciate your effort watching all my videos and i see that i like your comments and keep expecting more videos